Thank you, Dave. Turn Stephen Saloon in Florida Road. Who is Stephen Saloon? Is he merely your friendly neighbor who lives on Florida Road? Well, maybe he's that. But much more that he masked about himself when he spoke at the Affordable Housing Committee's public information meeting on Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. In 2019, he joined Fairfield County's Community Foundation as its Director of Advocacy and Capacity Building. FCCF is a 501c3 and must file an annual publicly available 990 tax return, which reflects an annual budget in excess of $25 million, net income after expenses of 2 to $10 million, and assets of over $200 million. And its leadership does well by doing good, very well, with some eye-popping six-figure annual incomes. They earn those salaries by advocacy and civic engagement with affordable housing, a euphemism for low-income restricted housing, as one of their priorities. But the poor are not the only ones to benefit from such advocacy and engagement. So are business interests, as represented by FCCF's Vice Chairman, Clay Fowler, who is also the founding partner of Spinnaker Real Estate Partners. The business interests are tangibly served by nonprofits that are designed to neutralize zoning commissions and convince the public that there is a housing crisis in Connecticut, that are the product of exclusionary zoning, that the state must remedy for diversity, equity, and inclusion objectives. It's an insidious source of unjust enrichment by a small number of rich and powerful developers. What does Stephen Saloon get paid so handsomely to advocate? Well, here's just a sample. Darien and in the town I live in, Ridgefield, very fortunate to have a healthy amount of services, quality school systems, etc. But a lot of that is defined by your zip code. We have a lot of disparity. I mean, this is one of the most economically and racially um, disparate um, regions in the country, um, Fairfield County, certainly economically and racially as well. And they go hand in hand. I understand that there are challenges with changing zoning laws in a given town or, or kind of coming up with a lot of housing and it's and transformation is not easy um, within a town. There are things that are possible uh, within a town. Um, and there are also things that I guess would have to be done at a state level um, or somehow done to help neighboring towns kind of catch up. Because I think this, I think it's safe to say that the cities in Connecticut have, because of our tax structures and because of how education is funded, have a tougher way to go. Sometimes uh, planning, zoning limitations and access to affordable housing, getting to the point that uh, James made as well, um, um, uh, prevent people from being able to access the things that they'd like to. Um, and I guess not everybody has the same starting line either. And so that is something that, that to be kept in mind. A lot of what we are talking about is systemic in Connecticut. It's almost as if, you know, by virtue of there being no county government, and I'm not suggesting, oh, we need to form a county government, although I love the idea of county, countywide discussions. I really do, but I'm not, I'm not coming to you from Fairfield County's Community Foundation to say, let's start a new a layer of government. But, but without it, let's just recognize without it, we leave towns to fend for themselves and, uh, the, and, and they tend to protect what they have. And that's fairly natural to think. Um, and so to some extent, uh, we kind of can't expect Fairfield alone to take care of their neighbors or Ridgefield to take care of Danbury et cetera, et cetera, there are some systemic, probably a lot of the fixes would need to be, or could be started at the state level. This is part of what I think Fairfield County's um, Community Foundation has to offer. Um, 
these conversations tend not to happen within towns because there's often not a, 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 a large base of motivation uh, for change in any one town. And the state's kind of diffused and it, more can happen at the state level, but um, it's harder. Um, it, it, it's, it's harder to pull off there. Yeah, just I guess a, this final thought that it, it, this is a very, this is the most financially unequal region in America. Um, it is racially segregated. Most of our towns, most of the suburbs in Fairfield County are ex over, well over 90% white. Um, uh, and the suburbs tend to have more wealth and the cities tend to have less the opportunities for even a fair start in the cities um, um, are less because of access to services and the rest. And the, there, the disparities are just pretty, pretty strong in Connecticut. And they seem to be contributing to, um, they seem to be holding back Connecticut's future, whereas otherwise we're a pretty strong state. Fairfield County's Community Foundation and its advocacy director, Stephen Saloom, are cogs in a much bigger poverty empire, as described by author and economist and senior fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institution, Thomas Sowell, to a black audience in 2010. One of the problems in dealing with the politics of poverty and the programs for the disadvantaged in general and blacks in particular is that Vast empires can be built on these programs. That these programs definitely prevent poverty among bureaucrats, economists, statisticians, and many others. Now you know who Stephen Saloom is and whom he serves. It is definitely not Ridgefield. In that context, consider what he has to say and how he and the poverty empire that pays him to say it stands to profit. Thank you, Steven Saloon from Florida Road, and I just want to I want to thank you all for your work. Um, governing is brutal, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's really, the housing is a hard issue. Working for years under a state required, mm -hmm. in a straight, state required pursuit, um, uh, to come up with really housing answers where the state actually has its own penalty that it's going to, or its own remedy that's going to kick in if Ridgefield doesn't choose its own way forward, puts pressure on Ridgefield to make really hard choices and figure out how to come up with answers that none of which are easy. So I just want to thank you all for your work. I know it's going on for years. It's had to go on for years. You've had to start in a place and spend time doing this, and most people don't have the time or ability to and you probably don't even, right, to invest in all this time for months and years. And I just want to acknowledge how hard this is, what you're doing. And yet, the state has a housing crisis. The county has a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. The town has a housing crisis. I mean, even the, the mm -hmm. numbers are, are, are patent. Yeah. And it country, threatens... Country. I mean, yeah, country. 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 Yeah. True. Right. Right. And so... But we've got about 20 million just more people here. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. <laughs> can, I just, can I just finish? <laughs> but it's still... we got a problem. And, and it's a problem. <laughs> and it's kind of not easy for every individual right. to enable the country to fix the problem. Right. So we have to work through governments to fix the problem. Right. And frankly, the can's kicking it down the road to the, to the towns, right? And they're not really handling the problem. They're saying, you guys fix it, and if you don't, we're going to impose something on you that makes you really uncomfortable, the 830G. Which is why we're trying to avoid the 830G, because that's the only thing we're getting from the state. And so you guys have to spend five years working on this plan pursuant to statute, and it's hard, and it takes a lot of work, and you're busting your tails try to get all this information. And most people become aware of it at the last minute. So I just want to acknowledge the brutal position I think you're also in, but also thank you for taking it and for carrying through and for staying strong on behalf of Ridgefield, even though no matter what you do and say, everyone's going to complain, or all sorts of people are going to complain no matter what the answer is. So I thank you for your work, 
And, and yeah, it won't be my last time to show up here. First of all, I'm, I, sorry I didn't get your name. I think there is an exaggerated um, impression of the need, the local need for affordable housing. Um, Ridgeville has 2% um, poverty rate and 3% of our housing is, is in that low income restricted category. We're one of 70 towns in the state of Connecticut that has a higher percentage of uh, affordable low income housing than we have um, poverty. Um, there are 16 people who are on the list uh, of the housing authority who are from Ridgefield out of 82 people that are on that list. Uh, uh, Mr. Goldenberg has said that will take years. The average length of time that someone from Ridgefield has been on that list is uh, 11 months. The average amount of time that a person from outside Ridgefield has been on that list is 16 months. There is, a, there is an attempt to exaggerate uh, the local uh, crisis, which is not a crisis, in low-income housing. There are some needs at the higher level where, there, where it, we do need to get more young families in here, and we also need to provide for people who want to age in place. But the low-income housing that is proposed, or that, that when they talk about affordable housing, no, it's, it's not affordable for everyone. It's for people who don't, who don't live here, in fact, who are from someplace else. And the, and the state wants us to take, quote, our fair share. There's, that's ridiculous. You know, our fair share of the state's problems, of Hartford's problems, it doesn't make sense. Let us take care of our problems, and they're very different problems than the rest of the state. They're characterized differently. We should address our problems. It's our plan, not Hartford's plan. Excellent. Just, just briefly, I, I, I get your point. There's also a chicken and egg problem there, too, right? Mm -hmm. If you can't afford to rent or to buy in Ridgefield, then you can't enjoy really the wonderful things that Ridgefield has to offer. And that's part of really the regional situation, and that's part of the state situation. And we have a state that is set up that is highly dependent on local property taxes for local education and local services. And so it's complicated. But I, 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 I see what you're saying, and I think it's, I, I trust that it's factually correct. Um, but I think there's a larger point as well that's worth considering, which is that you know, it's hard to get into a, a really nice town unless you already got a bunch of money. And there's a lot of working people that want to live in a nice town that are good people that aren't wealthy. And so it's really more about, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, really some op opportunity, right? Breadth of breadth of housing opportunity as well. So your point's well taken, but I hope you can appreciate mine. Thank you.